Recording on. You are ready. Na bona katika. So on the side mna vile kama ni piano. Today I'm not going to share anything on my screen. So your screen na na hapo mtaona tu the whole time and until uh, the session will be over. And uh, I'll take roughly between I'll try between 15 to 30 minutes. This is going to be a conversation, so please in case you want to say something you can you can always uh, interrupt anytime. So uh the topic it has sound more like a clickbait uh since we are uh, we are uh, it is well, we have a corona p- pandemic going on so trust you me it's not the same thing so generally this is a general conversation of how how do you make uh more, more outputs with little effort generally so I'll break this down to three categories that is uh, productivity and productivity as a developer okay oh uh, sorry if you're not a developer I think you can pick one or two points uh but also there are some other sections uh, like uh, finance and personal improvement So generally there are some of the things the life experience per se no I and uh, some of them I really want to know everything about me. people are going to find out that I work in sorry from uh, from books and you know podcast it is so we'll start with the development and productivity and uh, this one boils down to how much output do you do you do how much output do you what is enough output as a developer so most of the time you will write code and we usually don't talk about writing good code uh in most of the meetings i've noticed that one and what i mean by writing good code is how efficient are you like it's like uh, 80 to 20% rule if you have read the book so if i'm if you're going to write uh, like a one hour code what is the output of that code okay if you're going to make a login page if you take 80% of the time making a login page for 20% output then that means you're not you're not making enough with the less okay. okay so I, i'll try as much as possible to break down break down this uh, uh how i usually do my stuff number one is love doing it once what do i mean by love doing it once most of the time if you're a, a front end developer if you're running a business if you are uh, if you're a, a songwriter if you're a uh if you are a, a secretary of, for example most of the time there's some works you will repeat doing like the repetitive jobs that you will constantly uh, do every now and then so if if uh, what this simply means if you love doing things once uh also for developers for instance if you are querying database in each and every project you can build a library for your own to query the database every now and then if the the task is similar so this will save you a lot and on the next project you will write let me say you just uh import the plugin of the library for an 80% output like you just imported a library uh or, or into a project that you you did previously and the output you're going to get doesn't match the 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 work you did just importing that library so basically you did 20% of the work but 
but you're getting 80% output. So, love, the, the point is, as long as you're writing, you're doing something that can be done once, or that can be automated, it will save you a lot of time doing the same. So, this will supply to, to, to bugs. Oh, sorry. This also apply to they also apply to bugs and bugs are uh, I mean when uh, when when uh, twenty percent of software bugs are responsible for eighty percent of uh, uh, I don't know this is freaking me out uh, I'm getting notification and uh, it looks like my do not disturb mode is not totally working. Anyway, let's just proceed. Now, it's twenty percent of. Okay. Sorry. Oh, thank you, God. No. So, twenty percent, twenty percent, twenty percent of bugs are, are responsible for eighty percent of debugging. Basically, that means if you if you're going to if you're going to write software as a programmer try as much as possible to minimize your bugs. The reason for that one, you will take, uh, let me say like uh, 10 times uh, debugging the same bug uh, or debugging the bug from application of, from my application code. So try as much as possible to minimize the bugs you have in your, in your code. Now, there's also the, th the fourth point. Uh, focus on the uh, on the output. So uh, how we usually develop uh, I usually develop software is uh, I have my features and I put them into user stories. So I'll just give you some a sample. So I think this is the time I'm going to share my screen. Okay. So uh, early this year I stopped using uh, I stopped using uh, what do you call it? I stopped using uh, uh, this thing for tracking time. Mm. Oh man, I'm losing it. What's the name? Can someone remind me the, what you used to track developers' time in the in the chat section? Uh, what's the name? I know. Uh, oh, Wakatan, yeah, 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 Wakatan, yeah, yeah, Wakatan. So uh, I stopped using Wakatan, and the reason why I stopped using Wakatan is there's a way you are, uh, I've never used code time, sorry, Danvi. There's a way your brain is wired, and your, when your brain is wired in, in the sense that if you're going to track the, the hours you, you are punching the keyboard, you're not going to focus on, on the on the output that you're supposed to make. Okay. So for for instance, if I'm going to focus my time on on a login page, I'll try as much as possible right along just writing code but not focusing on the output. So eventually at the end of the day you will realize you've not completed completed a lot of stuff because you are focusing on how much time can I stay on my computer. So that affected me a lot and uh, and the problem with worker time is there's what is called the leaderboard. Let me just check uh, my work time. I think I'll, I'll, I'll keep on showing you what I use during uh, this demonstration, uh, this, this talk. So uh, the problem I had with worker time is this leaders board. So every time you go to your dashboard, you check the leaders board. Then the next thing you know, you start feeling guilty. Like uh, where am I? Like uh, what is what is what is my rank in the leaders board? Maybe you start narrowing down to leaders board in Kenya, in my team, and such stuff. Okay. So you will constantly think. Yeah. Oh yeah, there we go. You will constantly keep on checking. Someone is developing 96 hours per week, and you'll be like, "What am I doing? Can I sit on 
on my machine for 96 hours ah. or 13 hours in a day. So that one will affect you uh, mentally. The, like I said, there's a way the brain is wired. So I stopped. I stopped. Uh, I stopped uh, using worker time and started focusing on uh, on uh, output management tool. Like right now, personally, I use Clubhouse to try. Uh, I'm trying Clubhouse, but uh, in our team, we're using I think Trello. I'll just give a snapshot of this one, then I'll just kick it out. So we are using. Uh, mm, Using Trello, and you can see Trello, you, you are able to manage your your project very easily. So when it comes to project management, sorry, when it comes to project management, oh, where is this thing I was doing? Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so I'm doing it. Okay. Oh, yeah, there we go. So when it, 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 it will show you the percentage, your checklist, what you've done and what you've completed so far. So that gives you enough motivation to continue clear your checklist as soon as possible. Okay. Then uh, the next point is using design design patterns. Now you will always write code. You will always write articles. You will always write poems, etc. But there's what is called design patterns, and I think it's a it's a general rule that applies to almost. Uh, every discipline or every field and when you talk about design pattern is the way the way the way you do your stuff okay i know there's design pattern in code but the way you do your stuff the way you write your code so i this should evolve over time it should evolve over time but the benefit of having design pattern is come on mezaku sharpen a knife when it's on a, a it's called mbazi or something I don't know but when you measure to sharpen your your knife on a log okay you will master that skill over time and msaki kupeleka kwa jiwe you will find it hard sharpening sharpening your your knife so when 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 you're doing something have a pattern of doing it so that you will master that pattern over time uh until you know forgetting it will be a little bit difficult unless you introduce another pattern now always try as much as possible to iterate to iterate uh, to iterate uh, the pattern okay remember that the pattern that works for you that um, uh, make you make you produce more output you should stick to that one you should not copy marvin is using this kind of pattern I should try this pattern uh, uh, maybe on the coming project, okay? And the next, uh, the next project to realize uh, someone like Aaron is using a different design pattern, then you start using Aaron's design pattern. So your output, your output will be reduced as compared to or to the output that you will produce when using your own design patterns, uh, and. Uh, and something also I realized that we don't surely focus on is, is leveraging the language you're using to develop or the scale that you have. Now, most of the time, we will have skills. That is given. We will choose a language and we will die with that one language. Now, when you choose a language to die with one language, try as much as possible to, to master that language. I'll just give you a backstory about how I started programming and stuff and I ended up having PHP as my primary language. So most of the time you'll brush over languages when you're starting to code. Okay. But uh, when you trying when you try to try uh, almost every language, you are not going to have a clear path or you're not going to uh, understand the fundamentals of language, the way the environment variables work etc. Now, having a primary language and 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 dying with that language or dying with that skills, this you will master the skill over time. You will reach a mastery level. Now, when once you've reached a mastery level, it will be easy to figure out how to do or how to master 
other related skills to the, your primary skills. So that make it more easy or for you to produce you know, a lot of outputs after mastering your primary language. Now, uh, so the, the, there's something that I'll talk about, but I'll talk about in the mentorship uh, section. Uh, so remind me if I forget. I think I, miss, I, I put it in the, in the productivity or development productivity section. It's staying motivated while working on projects. And what I mean by projects is side projects. So please remind me about that one. Now, so how how do you how do you master a language, or how do you how do you kind of uh, you know uh, produce more output as a developer? The best advice is by practicing a lot, but also sharing information. Okay. Now, when you're sharing information, the first thing you'll think of is how people are going to receive that information. You will think about criticism, you will think about standards, you will think about uh, clean code, for example. Now, sharing your code, maybe as a package, as a library, will train your mind to think of the standards and how, 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 the, how the end product should look like. Okay, but when you're working alone most of the time, you just try to miss uh, that code. I don't want to call it messy code. You just write that code without, you know, focusing only very funny cars. Okay, so that also will affect how you uh, the, the input of any product that you're developing. So try as much as possible share information. By sharing information, everyone is keeping you in check on what you're doing. Even you personally are keeping yourself in check. Uh, then on, on the same on side project, okay. So uh, there's this theory or dogmaism about developers having a lot of dead project in their computer, which is very true. Yeah, I'll admit it. I have a bunch of them too. But so how, how, how do you make sure you complete a project? If you're working on an art project, if you're working on a book project or a side project uh, in, in tech. So we fail, to set, we fail to set clear goals. And what you should MVP, OK? Uh, and when you focus on MVP, you're not focusing on the end product. You're only focusing on what is going to be the of the week. This is what I'm going to complete by the end of the week. A few small wins. Okay. So when you're working on side projects, try as much as possible and uh, try as much as possible uh, to have as many wins as possible. Now, these wins will motivate you to have higher, higher you, you, it, they will motivate you to produce more as compared to just focusing on minimal viable products. So once you said, the difference between the wins and minimal viable product is this one. You are writing code that solve a problem, but they're lovable. Okay, this code can be used. It's a it's a it's a minimal viable product, but they are very lovable. Okay, so when you build a solution, I'll give an example like Slack. When they launched Slack, it was a minimal viable product, but everybody loved even the the design and everything. So don't focus on the design. Don't focus on the minimal viable product, but focus on wins. Wins means you win, and also the people that are going to use the solution wins. So oscillator something that is it, it queries the database. Yeah, it queries the database, but I don't have the UI interface. So the user is not winning, but in your mind you think the user is winning. Okay. 
Now, uh, now uh, having routines with development, uh, and and this is something that I try as much as possible. Uh, when you have routines, when you have routines, you know clearly what you're supposed to do when you wake up, what you're supposed to do by the end of the day, what you need to check. So having clear routines will help you a lot produce or uh, produce more when developing or doing any other thing. I know right now with cocoa crisis and everything else is scary. Yeah, it is given. But and 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 some come all is there, you wake up in the morning, you go to work, come back in the evening, shower, uh, cook and sleep and stuff. That was your routine. But right now we don't have a routine. Okay. And you'll find that most of the time you code like two or four hours in a day. And if you narrow down, you will realize you don't have a routine because you're not used to that one. For me, I think I've been working from home for some time. So that is my routine. Okay. I think for three years now, it is my routine. So uh, switching or... Uh, uh, transforming to this pandemic routine was easy for me and maybe my team but if you are someone who used to go to work from you know 8 to 5 it's going to be it, it's challenging for you right now to build a new routine so with, uh, when when well, the same one routine try always as much as possible to iterate like switch your routine maybe after X number of months or week, okay? That one will help you with things like fatigue, etc. And uh, on code, lastly, again, is on design, okay? So I, I talked about design pattern, and, and there's, there's this pressure. Of course, it is related to things like, uh, how do you call this syndrome? Imposter syndrome, and etc. Now, you will, when 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 you're a developer, you will realize most of the time people will talk about DDD, TDD, CICD, and you know when you're a junior developer, Docker and stuff. When you're a junior developer, you will think those are the standard of of programming that if I don't do this set standard by the society I'm not going to be a, a senior developer I'm not going to be a good developer okay but uh, these are these are just some random dogmatic rules put in place by you know the best known uh, companies and if you narrow down sometimes they even abandon them and 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 uh, when it's come to buzzword in tech, I think most of the time I'll advise you to take your time and do a little research. And if you have no idea, you can use what is working for you until you figure out the new the 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 new no, the new the new buzzword or the new buzz tech. Okay, and and uh, this is something that. Uh, I think, uh, uh, okay, let me check the, the messages, especially on that working from home. Self-control and discipline is key. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Now, well, Collins is uh, echoing out loud that when working from home, self-discipline is very key and self-control. I think I'll talk about discipline, plan, and self-control under mentorship. Yeah, I have it on. <laughs> Thank you. So when we're talking about design, design and uh, uh, design in tech, that means like how people think you, you you're supposed to develop uh, your application. Okay, it's 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 crazy, man. If you start following those kind of design, you might lose the way. You might start focusing on or on things that are not even important to what you're doing. Okay, so my best advice, for example, on uh, my best advice, for example, on let me take for instance test uh, test test driven development. Okay, 
when, when I'm starting a new project, when I'm starting to learn something new, or when I'm just figuring out a new idea that I was, you know, I, I, I'm trying to explore, I don't usually write tests. I just tinker around with the application and try as much as possible to, you know, try structure my code the best way. Most of the time, I I, I write tests toward the when I'm when I'm I'm about to push the application to production. That is when because you don't want uh, your your application breaking when you push into to production. You understand? So when this password, please try as much as possible to to lay low. Don't, don't just jump in. So if you are tech stuck, if you have a tech stack, what what I'm trying to figure out now, if you have a tech stack uh, use that tech stack for three six months. First of all, okay. Then iterate, okay. There's something new that were added. Of course, you should not just stick to it. You have to essential that uh, that that you can inject uh, on, on uh, during that duration. But if you have a, for example, I'll give example. My my tech stack right now is purely from doing anything. Website is it is PHP. Uh, Vue.js and uh, uh, you know under Vue.js we have like Inertia, we have uh, you know we have uh, Inertia and this this other one. Oh God, there's different. I think uh, forgetting I'm forgetting the other one. So if that is your text, that, that means your front end will always be Vue.js and your back end is always going to be PHP. You can write APIs. Or you can write a solid web application. So if I know my application is going to be consumed by third-party application, I'm going to stick with my API text start all the way through. Okay. But now imagine in between, uh, there's a new there's a new uh, JS framework. Like right now, there's Deno Denoland. Deno was introduced in 20, uh, 2018. So when 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 they know I think people are talking about it. So the next thing is almost every JavaScript developer will jump into it and start figuring out how they know work. So try as much as much as possible to stick to one text stack and do your research before using your using new tech 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 bar. Uh, in your application, so application that you're pushing to production. Okay, so that's pretty much on software development and some other things that I know are kind of irrelevant on output, but are personally they are irrelevant. Uh, I try to use the keyboard more, and the reason for that one, I, I get a lot of output as compared to using mouse. I structure my application on the on the on the the most active side of the screen that I use, okay? So I will welcome questions. Don't worry. On finance and uh, mentorship and personal improvement, I don't have much more because I don't have experience in those areas, but at least I know one or two, three things who, uh, from running business and stuff. Uh, but I won't take much time on finance, mentorship, and pers personal improvement. So if you have a question, I think, about about uh, development, productivity, or output, uh, please let me. Uh, you can, you can. I think you can. You can talk, or you can push them in the chat section. I don't even want to look at it. <laughs> no, it's awesome. Andrew is saying he doesn't. He, he doesn't want to look at Deno, but trust me, it's a. Uh, uh, I don't want to say it's revolutionary, but it's something awesome. Uh, they're trying to do something uh, different as compared to Node.js. So, in case you can't hear, yeah. okay. Thank you, Manuel. I'm afraid it will be too different from Node. No, it's not so much different. I think uh, you will learn a lot from it. But try, uh, try and explore it maybe for, I don't know, for fun. But. I think it's not ready for production, so give it uh, six months before you, s you use it in your any of your applica production application. So I think uh, 
there's no question so I'll proceed to the next one the next topic or, or subtopic mentorship mentorship so, sorry Robin, before you go on oh yeah okay go ahead uh, so a quick question uh, in regards to production eh? so yes maybe you you've been using a certain language to create your solutions uh, yeah. but you you're getting advice here and there like i think this is better or when you use this language or if you do things like this you might get a better a better result or yeah. something you might increase your productivity rate so like what do you consider in that aspect what do you consider like on what to settle on or something like or, or should you no, no. keep on doing what you do or how do you like uh, deal with that i'll give you a perfect example okay a perfect example is uh, uh, if if you are a web developer there is inertia okay so i actually look into this application as soon as i get my you know my hands on them and try this technology zinazinakuja so when you're developing application and someone tells you like ah this is better or there's a new version of uh, of os for instance or the the language you're using like we are migrating to php8 very soon okay and people will start selling you know php is adding a b c d now number one you need to consider the development and production environment okay because with new updates there are some breaking changes and it might affect your production or development environment it happened even to me this month so when you yeah when someone try to you know sell a new tech to you first of all the first question you need to ask them have you done research or have you used them personally uh, most of the time what I can be a yes or no and give you some reason some are bogus some are very straight okay then the next thing think around with that new tech in a, a hobby or just just a project like uh, uh I'll show you how I, I usually I usually set my development environment how my screen is visible so so there's 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 this folder there's this folder it says uh, I'll just do a list there there's this folder called dojo so I have that dojo folder to play around with anything that I want to play around with if it's a, a new application with some things that are very catchy so I just I try as much as possible play around with them I have a folder for playing around with, with solutions so that, that that is what you need to do so if it's uh, something about new tech you go build a project with it most uh, what I usually build is a to do app and I think uh, uh, I, I just build a to do app with it and when I'm learning uh, a new maybe a JS framework or something just try and build a to do app with it and see how flexible it is okay then push it to production so if if there's no breaking changes then I think you're good to go then again there's what is called uh, uh, tech debt that uh, it might bring when you're using application or when you're using new tech okay so you need also to consider that one the speed what am I going what is, what is it going to cost me to use this solution or what are, what am I going to gain to use this solution so you need to consider all those kind of of integrity a good example a good example I talked about this one last week is GraphQL and REST API so everyone is talking about REST API but I tried feeding REST with a lot of data and I realized that the development cost on the back end side is and is very huge when it's come to transaction and you know just trying to build those schema to match whatever the de the front end developer might require okay so i decided i'll just stick to rest okay so you need also to consider those kind of those kind of tech debt yeah uh 
so there's someone saying why do i need a front-end js framework oh sorry my dear you don't need a js framework please let me clarify this one the reason why people are using js framework is because it is easy to to scaffold a project very quick okay uh, I have been using Bootstrap and I find it satisfactory. Please continue using Bootstrap. Don't stress yourself learning learning uh, a JS framework. The only advantage is when you're building a uh, large application and you want things to do with uh, modularized code or uh, component code or front end with component. That is reusability. For example, if you're going to have a uh, a page for for payment and you want to use that that payment component in different pages uh, you can th that's when you can start looking at react silver g silver and and Vue yes so but but what i promise you as as you as you move as you continue developing django application you will realize a large application you realize it is easy to use components based JS front-end framework let me not call them JS framework component framework to build those applications it will save you a lot because of reusability and that's what I said you're doing 20% of the work but the output is 80% so when you build a login page and uh, you want to reuse the or let me say when you build a form and you want to reuse that form in different pages it is very easy you just call that component that's the advantage so for now you can continue using bootstrap but once you start developing large application you will have to you know switch to component based front-end uh, framework good I think we can proceed to mentorship now uh, when it comes to mentorship uh, I think you know guys start talking oh Mavo ni menta, Aaron ni menta, Jumala ni menta, Frank Tam I'm just calling my circles. <laughs> so if I don't mention your name uh, it doesn't mean you're not in my circle. So just throwing names from my head. Uh so about mentorship, uh, the way I view it, I've had different mentors over the time and I, I chose to talk about this one because my 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 view on mentorship changed few uh few months ago so basically mentorship just mean constantly learning from people's output not from people okay you just pick whatever someone is doing good and you run away with it okay so uh so you 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 are, you are not being mentored if you are not learning if you are not constantly learning and measuring the risk of mentorship okay you know you can say xyz is my mentor but the only thing you hear from them is uh, success stories okay i may put a job so be like kata mimi nataka kupata job but you don't get to know how wali pata job happened I huh? hope you get that one. So you 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 have a mentor, but you don't really understand their output, the way the way they do their stuff. Okay, and uh, uh, connecting mentorship with the with the with the topic of this talk of doing less and you know having enough output. Mentors will sell you their experience for example 10 years experience in 5 minutes okay so that means you are saving like you know 9 years plus 9 years and some you know minus okay 10 years minus 5 minutes okay so for example i'll tell you the way i structure my application the way i have my design patterns and everything very is uh, like in in 5 minutes and you will just you know copy that flow and iterate through it and you know have your own design pattern so i've saved you like three years of my programming journey so if you're not learning or if you're not constantly measuring the risk of having someone or something because you can have something as a mentor then means you're not having mentorship per se 
So don't look at a person a person as a mentor because you admire the success. But look at the outputs and measure the risk of those outputs. And those are the things that now now qualify someone to call you or you to call someone a mentor. Then on mentorship is a piece of work done by someone. Now piece of work done by someone should challenge you to replicate their actions or their, uh, their uh, what they are doing to achieve more results. Okay. So on mentorship, if the output you get from that mentorship cannot improve the way you you, you do you uh, you do other you do your stuff, for example, the way you output your product or whatever you are doing, then that is that is also not mentorship. Now, when 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 your output, your near the piece of the, the piece of work that you do is being is being appreciated by someone else. That means now you are the mentor. Okay. But now look at this story. It's very interesting. You have a mentor. You you are motivated or you are uh, you are inspired by what they by their output. Then you replicate that output and someone appreciates what you're doing with what you replicated from your mentor. And now you are in that position to become a mentor. Now, how do you know that your output is being appreciated or, uh, or, or you are inspiring someone? Is when people start asking you questions about the output. For example, if, uh, if I play guitar and people love the sound of, my, of the instrument, how do you tune the bass? How do you tune your engineering jury? But you get the point. So that will that will show you that you're having other guys, you know, appreciating what you're doing or appreciating your output. Then lastly on mentorship, and this one I borrow from from my colleague is writing down stuff. Okay. So when I, I think I have a list, I usually try as much as possible save stuff or you know write small conversation between me and someone and and uh the reason for that one is uh someone will inspire you like for you know let's say one week after the other week inspire but in the real sense if some mtuakikuliza bona mava na inspire you can't even list the top or uh you can't even list uh, uh, top five things so Marvin is, is, uh, is uh, inspires you. So what I usually do with my mentors uh, at the end of every year, Nandika, Ujama, Alifanya, Evi, and uh, that really, you know, that really inspired me, or that really motivated me to do something. For for example, the uh, for example, uh, one of my mentors told me like, hey, you know what? can't give you my book because eventually I will have a family and I want my daughter or my son to read this book. Okay. So uh, to a normal pa uh, to a normal person that sounds so negative, but to me I say, Oh yeah. So next time if I buy a book, okay, I'll I will i will either lend you and you return it back or I simply say no, I'm not giving you the book and you will ask me why. And I'll tell you, no, I'm planning to have a son or a daughter and I'll give them the book. You get. So I, I wrote that one down and simply squeeze if someone asks me for a book, I simply say uh I might give back some time. I don't know when, but I hope so. Um, so I think that's that's what I had on mentorship. There's so other so many other elements on mentorship that you know uh, we can talk about. But I think I want you to remember those key uh, those three key things. One is always learn and constantly measure the risk of the mentorship. And number two, uh, that. Be inspired by the output or the work done by your mentor and try as much as possible to replicate that work to mentor other people 
just to confirm if you're doing the right thing with the mentorship, you know. And lastly, uh, write down what inspires you from your mentor. And, you know, you will always remember them every member. Now, uh, we're about to finish. And... Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, uh, honestly, I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll give back. I'll give back. <laughs> I didn't see that one coming anyway. But so, <laughs> uh, okay. So, uh, so uh, on personal improvement, and and uh, this is this is just a personal. Maybe a personal story that I'll just tell you guys uh, on this talk is now when uh, when uh, uh, when 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 things change that is in business and uh, business relationship with the people how you talk these things do change over time and you and you start uh, and you will start to realize that. You need to amend some some of your actions or the way you relate to people, and and uh, these affect your output. They affect how much you can do with the less. Okay. So number one thing that I learned, I think, from this guy is called uh, Ravis or Savis or something. The guy who built CD Baby. Now, one thing I learned is. And I think we've been doing the same at Absla, but I didn't even notice. Is try to be as human as possible, okay? Try to be as human as possible. And what I mean by being a, a, a being a, a being a human as possible is making other humans feel like they're humans, okay? So I know it doesn't make sense, but I'll elaborate. So we have clients at Arts Lab, and uh, I think we try and call them every now and then, and try to communicate what's happening. That thing changed our relationship with our clients, okay? And they started appreciating our communication. So when I narrowed down, I, I realized that we just making this, uh, we just making our client feel cared for, just making them feel that hey, when I when I make a call, I know there's someone who at Absolab is going to answer. When I have a problem, I know there's someone at Absolab who's going to, you know, kind of answer. So I, I didn't see deep into that until I listened to a podcast the other day of making customers feel human and making people human. Then on another thing on personal personal improvement is staying motivated while working on projects. So most of the time you will realize you will realize that you don't have you don't have much psych man you you just there you don't want to do shit you you, you know yeah. you don't want to do anything the world's just pissing you off every now and then and and this relates to a point that I mentioned on having small wins so at the end of every week you look at how many wins did I have. How many stuff did I do? That will help you get motivated almost every day, every week, every month. Okay, and you will find yourself ever busy because you're trying as much as possible to have small wins. But here's the catch: once you start, once you start having these small wins, you will you will burn out, of course, and you know sometimes you need to take a break. Sometimes just you know want to have a nap the whole day, watch a series or something, go to the loo and you know watch TikTok, whatever. So, so uh, it's important to have those wins, but also it's very important to you know have have the have small breaks every now and then to or uh, at least to give you energy, to give you psych to for comeback. Okay, on the same is. <coughs> When when working on a project and right now I think maybe you are a writer, developer or something, but when you're working on a project, what you should what you need to do is a general overview, and uh, and I think we I started doing that one personally because I borrowed it from Arts Lab. 
for any for any little thing I'm planning to do, I just have a kind of a small overview of what I'm going to do and I write them down and I make sure I write them down whichever way. I do a research on it and you know get all the information that I need. So once I start uh that will uh, that is still on personal improvement. So once you start developing or doing something, it will be very easy for you to always it will be very easy for you to uh to do what it will be very easy for you to build whatever you want to build very quickly without any interruption or something. And it's it's make you you know, it gives you a piece flani that you didn't have. Okay. Now <coughs> The same point on staying motivated is try to distinguish the crucial features and the small features, what you can work on in 15 minutes and what you can do in 10 minutes. And try as much as possible to balance the priority. You might have your personal project and maybe your job, your, your, your client or your job project, and you need to prioritize which one is going to, you know, or oh, should come first. If your job, uh, your job project, or uh, your job project is in a in a take like two weeks from now, then that means you can you can produce, uh, you can work on your side project, and you know just, just balance the priority. Uh, okay, so 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 I think I need to wind up because I need to wind up. Uh, very quickly, because uh, yeah. So then the next thing is uh, building simple, lovable applications. So solve your problems. So the the revolution only comes when you start making money or when you are in power. There's no revolution that you will make. It's due me. I'm, don't come with me with the revolutionary idea. So revolutionary only come when you are in power or when you or when you have a lot of money. It, just, just check. People are building awesome things, but they are considered revolutionary once they start making money or once they're uh, they're in power. So just just try to build simple, lovable solution that solve your problem and, and a little perfection. Same, don't be perfectionist. Build something to perfection. Not not really to perfection, but a little perfection. Uh, and that um, and make sure you complete. Uh, the end goal. If you start something, uh, make sure you complete. Now, there's there's something that I need to mention on having ideas, and you will have a lot of them, by the way. I've just a list. Let me just show you. I use a different application. So when I think of something, I just write them down, and uh, give 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 it like a week. Give it like a week before, uh, before I you know I start thinking about it again. So by the time or uh, it's work this way. Ukifikiria for a week, it uh, the the cycle to reduce the market to come here. So the cycle for that idea is always reduced. So I think uh, yeah, startups ideas are something like that. So I just write this list here. I surely read the list here. There's a lot of them. Okay, there's well. some some are very weird. So uh, I always give them a week or a month. If I'm still badokas in a then I look if I can work. Uh, in the, I can work on those applications later on one when I'm free or something. Okay. Then uh, uh, share a lot of information. I mentioned that one. Okay. So, so number of time you go about. So I'll just rush over things. Reduce the noise. Reduce the noise. This one I said even last time, or I think during Fun Friday party. So reducing the noise is simply is simply simply muting your notification for when you are when you are doing deep work. We have deep work. I think I learned that one during a, I think a workshop or something. So try and as as possible to reduce the noise. Your Slack, whatever notification for X number of hours, concentrate on deep work, consume, and you know figure set a time to reply all those stuff. Now, one thing you need to know that no one knows what is going to happen. No one knows what is going to happen. So, please don't stress yourself. No one knows tomorrow. So, when you leave knowing that no one knows tomorrow, 
you know, just just figure out what can be best for the future. But don't concentrate like I want to be X Y Z rich whatever. Like if you time, so just just concentrate on, on on delivering today, and you know the the future will balance depending on what you're doing today. Uh, switch switch as many times as possible. So switching as many times as possible is you are writing something, you are employed, you're doing something, and you know. Uh, it usually comes to that, hey, I'm sticking with this thing for like X or Z. So try as much as possible to switch. Okay? If, if for example, I'll give you a good example uh, that I, I'm trying to maybe look into. So, come out to me. If you've been developing an application, for example, five, uh, five projects in Mefania and all of them require M-Pesa, M-Pesa payment or something. Build a library, build build an API for Mpesa, and get done with it. So you switch from the next project that requires an Mpesa. You have a library or uh, an API ready that you can consume. Okay, even if you like, you can even charge client for Mpesa integration. That means you switch from just developing software, and now you move to Mpesa API. So try as much as possible to switch, and remember if it is not. If it is not viral, then means you've not hit the the point. Uh, iteration soon. I wish I could have shown you how many tools I use on iteration and stuff, but I don't have time. Always ask for feedback for personal growth. Always try as much as possible. Ask for feedback. Uh, discipline is key. Collins mentioned about discipline, but I'm not going to talk about it because of time. But just know, discipline start from how you handle your project, how you finish, how you are honest with yourself, and it goes along with the plan. So if you can't be disciplined with yourself, stop lying to yourself. You're going to use, uh, you're going to use worker time and code for thirty, whatever. You're going to use a reminder application. Just be disciplined. For example, if you're detoxing from social media, you know you're supposed to check your social media twice in a day. Just be disciplined. You see, okay. Uh, or take a plugin to to distract you every time you go to Twitter or something. Just be disciplined and avoid it. Now, finally, on finance, <coughs> I'll just brush over this thing. I don't have time. Uh, being open to revenue, just uh, don't be open with what you make or what you do. It will help you a lot. It will save you the the bullshit around conversation with the people and stuff. And how much do you need to make? That is the next point. How much do you need to make? Okay, I know most of guys will say a million and stuff, but what I what I can say is just make enough, or enough of what you need. Just make enough. Okay, in money, just make enough in fact of what you need. So, for example, if if you need to travel, if if your life is revolves around traveling from Kenya to Dubai, thrice a year, just do the calculation. And do the budgeting and everything with your housing and stuff. From that budgeting, you know how much how much you need to make by the end of the year. So just make enough that you need. Don't compete about being a millionaire and stuff. Okay, just make enough that you need. If surplus the tapuja, add them on top. Uh, one serious thing that you need to watch out when building a solution for a business, please. Try as much as possible not to build your re- source of revenue on top of other business. For example, I'll give you, you're starting a, a training school on YouTube. YouTube can decide to do something else. Or you're starting a training school about uh, Safaricom and you are charging like 100 shillings. Uh, the next thing you know, Safaricom, start a training on Safaricom, on uh, Safaricom or let's say M-Pesa product in this scenario and they offer it for free and that's how your business collapse so try as much as possible not to build your business on top of other people business be responsible with the people who work with you the way you relate to them in the business stop writing business plan for Christ's sake I think you can just google in the internet uh, why you need to stop writing a business plan I won't explain much Revolution, like I said, in money, in finance, revolution is for the rich. So stop telling me about revolutionary ideas. Now, lastly, last 
uh, second last then second last is we have so many ideas we have dead projects in our laptop but what I want you to think about and I won't explain is idea when you have an idea it's like two bob when you have an idea plus an execution it will come at 10,000 now when you have a good idea plus effective execution it will come at 1 million so, so don't st stop writing ideas and saying you know this idea one day just step on it then uh, leveraging network okay now leveraging network please try as much as possible to leverage the network that you have with people I think uh, this is not a brag, but we try as much as we've tried marketing before, but we failed. We didn't really fail. Or I feel the some you know hiccups, but I think most of the stuff that we've done is because of network. So try as much as possible to the network. You can build a network in one year, but the output of that network in like five, ten years. And what I mean by network is you offering services to people for free. And there's no problem. So once they, they consider for even for consultancy, then they will just come say like go to Marvin, go to XYZ, they know how to do that stuff. That is a network to be like five years ago. And the project is Kuja is like never know. So lastly, my last point is the key is not effort, but finding the right thing to achieve with the small effort that you have. So the key is not the effort, but finding the right thing to achieve with the smallest effort that you have. And from all those things that I've mentioned, you realize they talk about doing 20% and the output is 80%. So with this coronavirus and stuff and shit and complaining about money, you can spend your time, you know, let's say the coronavirus will go for six months building a solution, learning, leveling your skill, you spend six months, but by the end of six months, you build something that the output will be, you know, AR will be effective for like five years or something. So build your audience, audiences, share items with people and you build a crowd, uh, build your knowledge, whatever, anything that, you know, you can leverage later on at the end of this of pandemic. So I think I'm done. Well I'll just have some few questions then I'll have to share up. Remember what time 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 in by. So let's go to questions I'll have to recall it tonight. So guys if you have a question, I think this is the time. Uh, we are uh, seven minutes uh, late. I think we'll, we'll give it a pass. Okay. Hello, Marvin. So, oh, yeah, yeah. So go ahead. Uh, I have a uh, much, I need like an advisor. Mm -hmm. I have uh, a number of guys around my cycle. Um, I think mm -hmm. we've learned stuff together, but uh, they've been caught up in something like um, a loop. Eh? Uh, these guys are much into tutorial stuff, and um, mm -hmm. they never seem to exit it so that they can get into real world stuff. Uh, every other time, they are they're so pro in tutorials, like, yeah, this is the best tutorial from Node.js. Yeah, you get a free course here. Yeah, you get this stuff here. You can learn this. Uh, and I'm worried. How can I help, or maybe from your own advice, how do you help someone uh, to exit this, this kind of uh, a lock? Uh, that they are so much into tutorials, but they never really get to try something um, something real, or maybe get a project to work on, or such stuff. Okay. Uh, so, I think I've been yelling about this one for like a year now, on about focusing on documentation rather than tutorials uh, the, the best way I think uh, if I'll find time uh, I'll talk to Emmanuel if I'll find time uh, or or I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm trying to start a, a, a YouTube channel called Morandev I think <laughs> I don't know uh, I'm trying to start a YouTube channel called Morandev so if I want to get time any, or if I want to get any, any time soon 
I think I'll uh, I'll try to do a video on how to you know learn learn even I'll take a simple language and how to use documentation to kind of um, think uh, how to use documentation to uh, how to use documentation to learn so you will focus on tutorial but tutorials are not structured they are not structured in, in in whichever way. So you will utakuja leo usome usome login kesho ukuja usome usome ni nyingine but at the end of the day you are not you are not building a product or focusing on something. So just just a quick one I think nimekata I'll just So just a quick one is how much how much someone is I'm I'm trying to figure out how to use uh, this thing so Mr. Jali. Uh okay I'll, I'll just figure out or maybe I switch to I probably switch to and you apple so I'm starting this one very soon uh so it's called just Morande so we'll see about that one but anyway just just to answer your question very quickly is uh what do you call this one Adonis. So you see like this one. So mostly you find tutorial even if you go to Laravel, you can even check Laravel. They have very good documentation. But now you are going to read tutorials, okay? Which you can't wrap your head around very well. But Ukyonapa they will get you started on installation, configuration, directory and strat. So so the the mode of learning should not be based on tutorials and whatever. It's supposed to be like if you're going to learn PHP, if, if you're getting a PHP book, what are from installation to building an application? Okay. Then from that point now try to build an application using those knowledge. I know the problem is okay, a beginner is how to structure your code, how to kupanga vizuri, when to use what and when to use what. I think that one will push for a different talk. So Emmanuel is in the in the call below in the call so I think you can reach out to him. I don't know if you can DM someone but you can put your email or something or number then he will reach out to you or I'll reach out to you personally and and I think uh, I'll let you know once you know that is ready on how to learn and build something with a new language that pretty much I mean practice what I learn using tutorials. Yeah, uh mostly uh I can't pronounce the name but it's okay. So when you have learned and and uh, you just want to practice I think the best way to practice is by by building, of course that's number one. And also by learning how people now advance after learning a language. And and that means how they structure their code, how they make their code seamless, and all those kind of stuff. So you will learn the layout and stuff, and you will practice. But now the key thing is now learning, learning how to, uh, learning how to, learning how to structure and build a production ready application. Yeah. So, so uh. As a junior software developer, how much should I quote in a negotiation when it comes to building an app? Now, uh, I think Kunasikutululi Zoiswali, I think during one of 105.4 event, uh, quoting a software is very tricky also in Kenya. Even us, but it's challenging uh, to our team. But I think the best advice I'll give you is talk to experience someone who is experienced well who has done that before and they will help you get a quote and also getting a quote depend on your experience too as a person so if you're beginning or if you're experienced that means if you're experienced that definitely you will quote higher okay but if you're intermediate or or, or uh, a junior dev then you will have to you know consider the output that you're going to give. Now when your experience will give high output, but when you're a junior dev you're not going to 
you know, you, you'll, you'll try as much as possible to give a good output by sourcing in a talk the way it's expected. So uh, it depends on your experience. Do a client background. If you can afford your rate, or you guys can meet in the middle. But I think for this one, you'll have to engage uh, an experienced dev who is independent, freelancing, or or something like that, depending on your experience and the client partner. So I can tell you one million right now, but the client can only afford two hundred thousand. You're comfortable with the two hundred thousand. So you see? So just just balance what you need. Like like I said, making enough is just means making enough of what you need. Yeah. Yeah, I mentioned that one, Colin. The thought of accomplishing the the project or task is also it's a self discipline per se. What the lowest one can quote so as not to uh, not to be underpaid. Oh, uh, if if it's a salary, yeah. If it is a salary, please. They always have a budget, so tell them to give you a budget. If the budget is too low, uh, tell them bargain with them if you really need the job but if you're comfortable please don't go for underpayment unless unless you want to to gain experience and explore learn the culture how people work and all those stuff yeah but it's usually narrows down to a personal decision and the company so the company will have a budget to tell them to give you their their budget or okay, same money twenty thousand and you feel you should you are supposed to pay you like sixty same on my race in Anzia 60, so Neza Bonga 60 when the layout. I think we are out of time, guys. So, the last question. Uh, I've been learning, but the problem is finding something tangible to practice the same skill. So, I've been static. So, how can I solve this? Build, you know, the problem with after, after. You know the problem with the dev is you, we, we try and as much as possible live in our mind. So after learning, then there's that kind of fallacy that you can build stuff. Then you can get to build stuff now in another So the best thing I'll advise you: start with small applications, okay, and make your wins. If say by the end of this week I'm going to do, I'm going to complete. Uh, to do list, just have that one and complete a to do list by the end of the week. And again, now depending on whoever is mentoring you, whoever uh, the developer that is guiding you, for instance, I think if it is whoever can assist you, but whoever is trying, come up dev just talk to them and they will try to help you navigate this problem very easily. They will tell you what to do and how to do it, and that is what I meant by selling you three years experience in five minutes so get someone that can you have the skills but they will tell you how to use the skill that's the important thing you have the skill but get someone to help you to get your on how to use the skill so sometimes you can quote thinking you know the effort you can even and you realize the amount of work is immense Yes, I said that one. So the best thing we've we've been in that we've been in that rabbit hole before. So the best thing when you quote a project, the best thing is try as much as possible and engage someone experienced. Okay, we've been in that rabbit hole before, and I know how hectic it is, also from the uh, angry clients. So just try as much as possible and talk to someone before quoting something. They will give you their best advice. Most of the guys who run agency. So don't quote much. Don't quote less too. Uh, how to solve the issue. Uh, I think Kerone. I think I explained that one. Uh, oh yeah. I think I've explained that one. Uh, pretty much. So the last question. Then we are out of here. Very true. I guess now that we are extensive research before committing comes in. So don't commit immediately. Client, I'm a project, pop, we shall commit. So take your time, one beer, I'll give you the quote tomorrow, I'll give you the... They will tell you, I need the project to start tomorrow. The moment you jump in, umejifunga to up. So just tell them, yeah, I know, but we need to have the nitty-gritties. And remember, 
sign a contract. If you don't know, you, you can get a sample of our, of our contract. It's not done, okay? It's not complete. You're working with the body to to have that contract uh, done, so you can get you can get it here. Something in progress, okay? I just put it in the in the section here. Uh, I just review it in. I just review in case it has any information. Uh, still work in progress where is the chat so yeah you can you can try and read that one if you need advice we'll let you know so we're working with the body on this one uh the session we did on on contract so yeah so guys i think uh, thank you very much uh i was shaky shaky but i think we're good okay so we're done for now emmanuel i think uh or oh, you can join you can join the WhatsApp group for further yeah, thank you Emmanuel. Uh, I don't know. God I hope you guys won't see my chats and stuff. Uh, but it's okay. Uh you can you can you can join the uh on your phone though. Uh if you are using Linux and Google, you can join the WhatsApp group. We have Geekstock Thursday WhatsApp group, so most of the conversation we have in that group. So please use that link to join. Thank you, Maria, for that. And we're done. Thank you, everyone. And see you next Thursday. We will communicate Thank on you, the topic in the group. Thank you. Thank you, Marvin, and uh, the, the guys who contributed. And uh, yeah, see you next Thursday. And I want to say that Bruce Kenya a very motivated developer. <laughs> Thank you. So, bye, guys. So, so, so uh, you can find, we will record this.